woman at the well. And um, we're going to go actually through, go through this again a little bit more detail today. But, like, Jesus is tired out by his journey, and he just is reconciliation to God. He is the revelation of the Father. He is um, releasing heaven onto earth. And so even though he's tired and he's worn out and all this stuff, of course he has to talk to her. He loves her, right? Even when he's not supposed to be talking to a Samaritan woman, he, does, you know, he doesn't care. He loves her. So, um, hey, Kyle, can you throw the, uh, the engagement wheel thing that I had up on the screen? I always say that. I always say throw it up on the screen. That sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? Oh, maybe get it like that. And I'm just thinking like, uh, Anyways, so he's going to put that up here on the screen. And as we go through this, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this and about how it's a measuring measurement tool and not a, you got to do it this way and this way and this way. One thing that I've really struggled with in the past is I've heard people share about how to go out and reach the world for Jesus. Sometimes it becomes um, so methodical, it doesn't include the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and it doesn't include our giftings and who God created us to be and our uniquenesses, right? The cool thing I like about this is this is about just having conversations wherever we're at. So whether it's at our jobs, whether it's at um, the grocery store, whether it's at baseball practice, where I was at with my, one of my, well, actually it was with all three of my sons yesterday. Wherever it is, um, we are, as we're loving people, we can be intentional in our conversations, and it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go through here a little bit. If you want to turn to John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman, and as I'm looking through this, think about where they may be on this wheel. And by the way, if you're unsure, it's okay. This isn't about, you know, being religious. I mean, okay, I don't know. Let's argue about whether this is a spiritual Jesus conversation or no, I think it's a meaningful conversation. You know, it's not about that. If you, if you want to do that, you're missing the point of the wheel or I'm doing a bad job articulating what it is. For those who weren't here last week, I'll briefly say this is just a kind of like a, we call it an engagement wheel and, um, about how it's about right now it's a measurement tool that we're talking about whether you know measuring where we're at in our relationships with people and conversations whether we're having casual conversations with folks or it's becoming more meaningful maybe we're talking about a challenge in their life spiritual jesus centered or if they're like actually entering into community with us where we're um, or with other people where we're encouraging each other to go out and to change the world for jesus who wants to see this world madly in love with jesus by the way yes Let's do it. You know what I mean? I tell you what, you know what? I was, the, the, before I say this, um, I was, the Holy Spirit was talking to me this morning and we're just revealing just even more deeply like what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Like, to be a disciple of Jesus isn't just studying the Bible. If that was it, that's all we would see in the New Testament, was Jesus got together with his disciples to study Torah. Now, is that an awesome part of it? Sure, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a journey with Jesus. They're on mission, right? They know what they're doing. Like They're on mission to go and to, to reconcile the world to God, to go and to die. Jesus was uh, for us, and his disciples, as Jesus dies and resurrects, goes out into the world to change the world. This is what being a disciple of Jesus is following Jesus. It's, 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 it's more than just studying. It's being. It's who we are. If we want to be a disciple of Jesus, let's go. You know, it's awesome. Oh, it is. This is the most exciting life we can live, I promise you. I'm going to start in, in, in um, actually, I'll start in verse 6 of chapter 4. Um, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by a well, and it was about noon. So again, y'all, he's tired. Who's ever been tired? Who's ever been like, man, God, I don't know, I feel this up on my heart for this person, but I'm telling you, I'm just too tired to do it. I've done that. More than once, more than once in my life. Oh, you want me to go talk to them? Yeah, but, yeah, but my kids kept me up late last night. God, I just—it's not, it, just not, just not today. But Jesus, man, I just—what I love about him is I don't think it was like an argument with Father. I think it was I just love this woman, and and I and I love my Father's mission to go into this world. So I, I, I've got, I've got to, you know, in his heart, like it was just like it is who he is. So it says a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to, to buy food. Where might that statement fit in on the engagement wheel? That's pretty simple, I would think. Casual. It's a pretty casual conversation, right? They're sitting down. He asked, hey, can I, hey, can you give me a drink? 
would that be hard for some of us to do? Like in the, I'm just like, let's put it in the real, in the real world. Let's do a Samaritan woman example, and let's do a real world example. How about that? That, and I say real world, a real our culture and our world where we're at right now example. This was a real world example as well. So let's pretend we're at work. Now some of y'all don't work, so if you don't, pretend you're at, um, I don't know, a restaurant that you go to regularly, or maybe you go to the gym regularly, or wh- something that you regularly go to. <clears throat> and let's just pretend you're at work, and um, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a person that just kind of God draws to your heart. And you're also thinking, hey, I really want to see people reconciled to God. And so you see this person, and y'all are just kind of sitting in the break room together, and you say, hey, hey, can you, you're going to the fridge. Can you grab me a bottle of water? It's pretty similar to what Jesus did right here, isn't it? Just a very casual conversation. Now, to some of us, that's difficult because maybe we've never talked to this person. We, it's, it's hard. Like we, we, it's hard to engage um, with, with new folks. Um, but I, I promise you, the more you do, the more we do it, the more it becomes natural and becomes who we are. And um, Jesus, the Lord was telling me this week at baseball practice, he said, you know, I'm a people person, John. I love people. I love people. And I know some people, it's easier for us to engage and stuff, other folks, but, um, but and others of us are more introverted or whatever, but I, I believe that <clears throat> having some of these conversations and stuff are actually very simple and will flow very naturally. So he says, he says, give me a drink. And her response to him is, like, how, why are you talking to me? <laughs> that might be in today's terms, right? Like, what's the deal here? Because he wasn't supposed to be talking to a woman from Samaria. Jew, they didn't, that Jews didn't mix well with Samaritans. They argued about where to worship. They did all the kind of things. They didn't like each other. And she was a woman, and she said, why? Think about this. Now think about our, our, our you know, in our office scenario. The Holy Spirit puts someone in your heart that people just think strange. You guys have one of those people in your office? Some of you is that person. Like, you just pointed at me, Andrew. That's not fair. He beat me to the punch. That John guy, man, he's just weird. I, don't, I, can't, I can't engage him. But imagine, see, Jesus stopped for the one. There's a lot of people that, that people have overlooked their entire lives. Or maybe they see... Are you Jew? Maybe they see Andrew's tattoos all over his arms, and they think he's too tough or something, and they're afraid to approach him or whatever it may be. And you just saying something simple like, hey, do you mind grabbing a bottle of water? Like engaging that? That person may in their mind be going, whoa, why is he talking to me? Why is she talking to me? Like people don't normally engage me. That's the type of person Jesus is engaging here, right? And she even says it. Now the person that you were talking to may not say it verbally, but they may be thinking, huh, that's interesting. So how does Jesus respond to this? He says, um, in verse 10, let's look at that, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you, given you living water. Well, that's quite a turn in the conversation, isn't it? I mean, that's interesting, like, Jesus goes from what I would call a casual to a meaningful conversation in about less than a minute, doesn't he? Like, uh, he just dives right in, like, hey, can you give me a drink? Well, I mean, why are you even talking to me? Well, actually, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me, and I'd give you living water. I wonder what she was thinking. I mean, we're going to see how this conversation progresses, but I wonder what she was thinking there. See, by the way, y'all, you may enter into, conver- into relationships and conversations with people and completely skip casual, by the way. It's not a formula. It's not a one, two, three, four. It's not. Andrew told us this week, he said, I hate casual conversations. I like to have meaningful conversations. And he was like, I, maybe I should have more casual. I'm like, no, if, if your gift is to have meaningful and you just dive right in, dive right in, buddy. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, man. Oh, man, I had a really meaningful conversation, but I haven't had a casual conversation with them. I need to go back and talk to them about fishing. That's not, that's, not, that's not what it's about. And so Jesus, though, dives right in. And I'll tell you this, very often in my life, um, when I've seen the most fruit, is I kind of dive right in pretty quick to, in people's lives. Do you guys ever have those times where you've been so casual with people so long, it's actually difficult for you to kind of bring up Jesus? <laughs> because it's awkward now? Like, that, I hate when that happens in my, in my life, but it happens. I mean, it's happened a lot of times. It's happened 
to be honest, that like the rock climbing gym where I go, I've climbed and talked about rock climbing forever, and there's people that I haven't really had many Jesus conversations with or, or much. And so now I feel, you know, drawn to somebody, and it's a little awkward for me because they're like, hey, you've been climbing here for two years. You haven't really brought Jesus up much. So even Preacher John, you know, has done that. So I just want to be real and completely transparent. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. But as Justin said, failure is the manure for something good. I don't know. <laughs> I just totally messed that up. Failure is the fertilizer for future fruit. I don't know what I said, but it didn't sound as beautiful as that. I don't know if you can use the word fertilizer or manure and say that that sentence was beautiful, but I just did. But that's, that's the reality. It's awesome to think about that, right? We're learning, learning through, through doing, and I love that. I love that about it. Um, so anyways, so he has this meaningful conversation. Now, how might that look in like a, an us in our office or whatever? One thing that, and we'll talk about different tools and stuff, but one thing that a lot of folks use is, you ever heard of uh, like 20-second stories of Jesus or, or anything like that? Like, here, this is the way I look at it. I love Jesus. Like, I love him. Like, how many times <clears throat> have you found something you're super excited about and you just can't stop talking about it? I know y'all have done it. It may be like a book that you read and you're just like, it really impacted your life. And everybody that you talk to, you go share it, you're going to say something about that book with them. You're like, man, I was reading this book and, and you got to check this book out. You know, or <clears throat> maybe it's a, maybe for some of y'all it's a Netflix show, you know. You're like, oh my goodness, have you seen blah, blah, blah? It's so good. And like you find yourself constantly telling people about it. Why? Because you're passionate, you're in love with, you're just excited about it. And if we can have this intimacy with God, like life in God is, should be exciting. It really should. Now we express our excitement different ways, but it should be exciting. It should be an awesome adventure. And so <clears throat> what can happen is, y'all, if we just begin to, to, um, to recognize the, the, just the amazingness of this relationship that we have with Jesus, the, the, the gospel truth that we have, the everlasting life that we have. I mean, just think about it. Think about what we have in Christ. Think about how unbelievably amazing it really is. Imagine, imagine when you first just received that truth and how excited you were about it. Because you're like, oh my goodness, I can live differently now. I don't have to be in bondage. Hey, I get to have eternal life. I've got all these things. And I, remember, I know a lot of us told a lot of people about Jesus. Now, if we let that flow naturally... Um, I found this be a really cool way to find out if someone is open. Because we're not trying to arm twist people into the kingdom, right? We're not going, hey, I'm going to wrestle you in, and you better come in, and, like, and you know, we're grabbing hair, and we're throwing people in, or whatever. Our hearts are, I look at Jesus' model. He sent out his 12, he sent out 72, and said, look for persons of peace. Look for people who are open to the kingdom. So I may say, what if I told this story to someone? What if I handed, they had the bottle of water, and I said, hey, this may sound kind of crazy, um, but Jesus, Jesus was hanging out with this woman this one time where she wasn't like someone he was supposed to be spending time with. And he, he said, uh, you know what? If you knew who I was, you would ask me for living water. That's interesting, isn't it? See what they say. Another 20-second story of Jesus that ha doesn't have to do with this may be Zacchaeus or something. I love that. Jesus stopped for Zacchaeus, the one person who nobody liked. He was the dude in the office that, like, steals sales from everybody, and you hate him. And Jesus walks right up to him and goes, hey, I'm staying at your house. Like, when you can put it into very practical, like, d these day terms, like, it's amazing. Like, people go, whoa, that's interesting. Like, I never saw Jesus that way. We're revealing who God is. That's what we're doing. You may say something about the living water and the, and the, and the guy or the gals, like, that's interesting. I wonder, what's living water? That's, you know, interesting. Well, let's see. They may not be interested. They may not want the conversation to continue. And if, and if they don't, then that's okay. Talk, talk, talk to somebody else. Keep praying for them. Pray for openness. Pray for more opportunities. Again, it's not an arm twist thing. So Jesus says this, and she says, Sir, I see you have no bucket. The well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? who gave us the well with his sons and the flocks and drank from it. So she was interested. Like, it intrigued her. She was like, okay, what are you talking about this living water? Who are you? Uh, how, how can we get, you know, what's going on? How can we get this living water? What, what's going on here? So maybe your person is interesting. Like, hey, what do you mean? What, is, what, do you, what, what did he mean living water? What is that? 
That might be his response. Well, Jesus, his response here is, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give them will become in them a spring of water. Man, that's some good stuff right there, isn't it? Gushing up to eternal life. So he says this to this woman, and your response to your friend could be something like, yeah, Jesus talks about, like, like he has this water that when you drink from it, like, it is completely satisfying. That it becomes a spring, meaning it constantly flows. It's not like a cup of water that, that, that you drink and it's gone. That Jesus, like, he desired for us to have this spring, this flowing spring, and like so much, he said, it actually is eternal life, which is awesome. Well, what was her response? Give me this water (laughs) so that I may never be thirsty or keep coming here to draw water. She kind of misses the depth of what he's talking about completely, right? (laughs) Like he's talking about this deep, like um, uh, truth of, of of connecting with God in such a way that, that we have relationship with him and all these things, and we have this river of living water flowing in, and she's just thinking, dude, I would love to not be thirsty again. Where do I get this? And maybe your person's the same way. Maybe they miss kind of what you're talking about, and they're like, man, I bet if you gave me a bottle of everlasting, you know, thirst-quenching water, I'd sure take that. Maybe that would be their response. How does he respond to her when she says that? She's kind of, again, missing the point just a little bit. But he's talking. She's continuing the conversation. He says, go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. So Jesus gets a word of knowledge, is what a lot of people would say, about this woman. Right? So what that means is he got some revelation about her life and about her husband's and about the gentleman that that she's with right now. And so it's interesting that the, the way this conversation has gone, and this really is where it's important that you and I have an intimate relationship with God and that we're constantly leaning on him and his Holy Spirit as we're having conversations, as we're loving people, as we're engaging them. Because honestly, this is kind of like a complete other turn, <laughs> like this, the, the way the conversation's going. But God had given a revelation, and he can do it to you and I too. This is, this is, this is the, way, the way the Spirit works. These are some of the gifts that the Spirit gives. I've had it happen to me. Honestly, it happens to me a whole lot more when I'm listening than when I'm listening. I remember some of y'all may have seen like being at like even RFC last year. Remember that? And I, I remember just having this word that popped into my heart was just Charlie. And I, they were praying. It just kept going to my heart. And I'm going, oh, gosh. Oh, Lord, do you want me to say something about this? Like, you know, you have this internal battle. I'm like, what if there ain't nobody named Charlie here? What am I supposed to do? Uh, what am I going to do? And then I just felt like, all right, I've got to take the step. And so I just, I just said, and I just said real quick, I said, hey, is anyone named Charlie? And this little, gr- this girl's eyes go like this, and she like, oh, and she grabs her friend. And what had happened was there's this, this her someone's brother or something had just really been walking away from the Lord, and they had spent this day praying because this person, her friend that was there, was just tore up about her brother or sister, whatever brother I guess it was, was tore up about him. And for her, God loved her, those two enough to speak a word to encourage them. And it meant the absolute world to them. And some of you may go, man, I just don't know if I could do any of that. Very practically, for me, um, sometimes there are thoughts that just kind of, when I'm having a conversation with somebody, just kind of come in from left field. You ever have that happen? Sometimes that's the Lord. It really is. How do we know we just, we test, we grow. It really, we, that's, that's what we do. We take a risk, we take a step. See, Jesus says here, he says, go call your husband. He didn't go into some great revelation at this point in time, actually. Whenever I was up speaking, I said, is anyone named Charlie? If no one stood up, then I may not have continued, right? I took a, I took a little bit of a step. So it may look like if you were doing this to your person, to, to a friend, you know, you're having this kind of conversation, you say, hey, you know, and you can be super real. Be real. You may be like, hey, this may sound weird. I, I, I've said, I start a lot of conversations with people that say this may sound weird. I say, this may sound weird, but I just, I just, are you having, are you and your wife or your husband having problems? And they may go, nope. And you may be, okay. And you just, but they may go, they may start crying and go, I just, we just had 
just a huge argument this morning. I, we fought. I was on the phone driving to work. I could barely even get to work because our, our marriage is in shambles. And can you imagine how much that impacts that person to know that there is go- a God who cares about them enough to have a coworker say, hey, God's revealing this, and He want, and I'm here to pray with you. I'm here to be with you. I'm here to walk you through this, right? Because when Jesus says this to this woman, she's actually blown away. Later on, she's like, come and see a man who told me everything. As he did. And so it says, the woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said, again, you were right in saying I have no husband, for you have five husbands. Because God had given that word. And if you want to, by the way, I'm just going to pause one moment because I feel like the Lord says this. If you want to grow in that area, you can come see me or Justin. Like, there's, like, there's some books, there's some people that you could, like, listen to and stuff, and um, that could really help you to grow in that, I believe. Guys and gals that really operate in that really well. I feel like if, if there's a gift that you want to, you feel on your heart to grow in, to go be around people who operate in it. It's pretty simple. Uh, that's how I've grown the most. Um, <clears throat> so she says, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. That's pretty, pretty obvious. <clears throat> And then listen to what she says. And think about this. So she, he's spoken about her husband, and her response is, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place we must worship is in Jerusalem. She wants to get into a religious discuss, debate about where we're supposed to worship. That happens all the time when you get in conversations with people about Jesus. Guys, like, it would be like, like you have this conversation, this guy or gal is kind of tearing up and like yeah what what denomination are you <laughs> like i'm just being real that's just what happens how many times have we had that happen justin i mean i remember having that i think i told y'all that a free prayer sign the guy comes up takes his backpack off and the first thing he says you know I, i'm i'm thinking this guy's ready to have some prayer and he's like what denomination are you you know i said jesus lover throw him way off no 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 I'm baptist methodist what are you oh just a person who loves jesus a whole lot and like it really kind of intrigued him and think about this she wants to argue with him like where are we supposed to worship now jesus goes on to say here well salvation comes from the jews but then he begins to also reveal to her an even deeper truth but there's there's coming a time where they're going to worship in spirit and in truth sometimes whenever i respond to people in those types of ways um they may want to get into where do you go to church what's your what's your background all these things like just listen to the holy spirit He'll give you some pretty interesting things to say. I really, I really believe that. And I'll have those conversations where I'll be like, I'm just, man, I'm just, I just love Jesus, and I just, I just believe in, like, loving people and caring for people and sharing and revealing who Jesus is. That's just, that's, that's, that's just, that, it's just amazing. And you know, you know how much he loves you. I know you, maybe you've heard it like a thousand times on billboards, but it's totally legit. He's totally right here, and he really, really loves you. Just be real with folks. And again, Jesus begins to, to, to do that. And then her response is, well, I know Messiah is coming. And Jesus says, I am he. So the conversation totally is in the spiritual category now because they're talking, it's centered around Jesus and centered around Jesus being the Messiah. Is it not? And so Jesus is testifying about himself here, isn't he? There may be a time where, where you're having this conversation, they're talking about this, and you get to say, share your testimony who you are like have you ever like practiced sharing your testimony like the more you do it the easier it flows is why it's not like i'm trying to get like uh programmatic or whatever but it's like in anything whenever you're working a job when you're learning a new hobby the more you do it the more it just begins to flow and the more i'll recognize that the more i begin to share my testimony who i am the more it begins to flow into my conversations like it just is it i is who i is and it, it is who i am and so I'll just be talking to folks, and like, it'll just be a, it may be like, I may say, <clears throat> yeah, man, you know, I've, 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 I've been in the church for a lot of my life, and, and God's just been showing me recently, um, really just been focusing on Jesus and, and, and authentically following him and being a disciple and authentically encouraging and encouraging others and us just really not just studying the Bible, but really, really living the scriptures out. And it's just a passion in my heart, man, and, and, and um, you know, if you're interested in, 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 you know, I may pull out a pocket disciple or, or talk about um, coming along with me. If you want to come and just hang out with me, man, let's continue this conversation, let's do it. Like, are you interested in doing that? 
And I'm going to tell you something. You don't see the problem is is we've taken evangelism as like you have to make someone has to make some commitment after a 30 second conversation. Like like they're not been lifelong having all these things that have gone on in their life. They haven't had all these different influences that have gone on in, in, in their life. And I think that that hinders us an awful lot of times. And as John King, he'll talk about, and we're going to have him um, share about Discovery Bible here in a couple weeks, but like they form groups very often around people who are interested in Jesus. They haven't even professed, right, Christianity. They're just interested in learning more about Jesus, discipling them to faith. Jesus told Peter, come follow me, before Peter ever said, I know that you're the Messiah. It wasn't until later that that revelation happened. So sometimes we're re- we gotta we gotta close the door, you know. We want to seal the deal. We treat it like it's a sales pitch rather than a person who God really loves. And that person may that person may go through this whole wheel in five minutes. They may go through it in fifteen years. <laughs> they may go through it in three weeks. But that's the importance of some of these of of the Holy Spirit and why I've actually put that on there. Justin, you wanna come here for just a few minutes here? Um, before we close today, I just want to share with y'all, and I'm going to ask him to as well, because the reason I keep having Justin come up here, guys, is because he is probably, he is not probably, he is one of the most, um, one of the best persons I know that goes out and can just allow these conversations to flow so naturally in his, like, it just is who he is. You know, I keep saying that, um, but like, it just, it just, it, and, and that, j- it just flows so naturally, and I think he can be a, a tremendous help, so um, just kind of talking about whatever the Lord has on your heart, brother, and um, and then just, we added a few things as you see here. Last week we talked about casual, meaningful, and, and community, and then we have the center here, which is really uh, what we look at as, you know, what keeps the wheel spinning. Actually, uh, you said what's on my heart, so I'm going to share this, but the, the Holy Spirit gave me sort of the analogy of this for today that I think is appropriate. So, we keep saying, um, I is who I is, is what John would say. I think it's important to note here, Jesus didn't go to the well looking for somebody to share the gospel with. That wasn't what he was there for. He just wanted to sit down. I think he intentionally, intentionally chose a spot where he knew that people would come, but he wasn't looking for someone. It says that he was tired. If you look at the discourse here, she comes up and it's almost like he's like, hey, give me a drink. Like, we can kind of go, it's a little bit arrogant, man, <laughs> right? Like, is that really, because we think he walked around with the halo over his head and, oh, would you please give me some water or something to that effect. I'm, I'm not trying to paint Jesus. He just, he was a God, but he was a man. And she kind of, you know, in the politics of that day, looks at him and is like, how is it that you're going to ask me for a drink, man? Like, you guys don't even like our, my people. Right, and so this conver- and so he kind of comes back with, "Hey, if you knew who it was, it might be a little bit of a tension going on here." And so I, I was kind of thinking about that as I was sitting here, and um, and kind of thinking about some of the tensions in our culture today, and whether it's you know uh, religious tensions between Muslims and Americans, and or whether it's tensions between you know whites and African Americans and all this. This is equivalent to somebody just, let's just say, I, I'm going to use me as an example because I think it'll help your picture be a little more visible. And I'm not by any means saying that I'm Jesus, but we are to be like him in this world. It's no different than me going on one of my many trips and going to a town and having no place to stay because the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. And I just kind of go to a park and I'm at waiting. I'm sitting at the park thinking I'm going to sleep in my truck tonight. And let's just say that the park is in a rough area of, I don't know, Memphis pick a town, Detroit. Detroit's really rough right now, right? There's a lot of bad stuff going on in Detroit. And as I'm doing that, some, you know, African-American fellow comes up. And I'm like, hey, man, do you mind if I come stay at your house tonight? That'd be kind of weird, right? And, he, and, and depending upon what kind of mentality he has and what he's experienced, not knowing the heart of love I have, he might look at me and say, man, how is it you're going to be like this southern white boy going to ask me if you can come stay at my house? And my response is, dude, listen, man, if you knew who it was that was asking you what I have to offer, I would, I would help you build a new house that would never fall apart and never go into decay. It would always maintain its value. And he kind of looks at me like, this dude's crazy, right? 
And so he looks at me, he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd be saying like, man, how are you going to do that? You don't, you don't even have any tools and all this stuff, you know? And Jesus is going through this, and, and, and it's like, how, how are you going to <laughs> gonna build me a house? And I say, I say to him, and I say, I'll tell you what. You call your wife, ask her if it's okay if I stay at your place, and, and I'll show you. I ain't married. You're right you're not married, because I just got a word of knowledge. You're right you're not married. In fact, you've been with five different women in the last two years, and the current girl you're with, she ain't your wife either, because the Holy Spirit gave me that one. And he's like, oh, man, you're like some kind of religious dude, huh? I got a question for you, man. I was at church a couple weeks ago, and this pastor was up there telling me that I can't know Jesus unless I get baptized. But somebody else told me, man, all I got to do is believe in him. And then I can go to heaven. Now, now, that, now we're touching on some political topics and some religious topics, and everyone's kind of going, uh-oh, what's Justin think about this? And my answer is, dude, if you understood the kingdom of God, you'd know it's not about heaven or hell, but it's about knowing him. And if you knew him like I know him, he would reveal things to you about other people as well. Now, I didn't go to the park to reach people. I just went to the park because I was tired of being in the car. And I needed to take a break, and it was getting late in the day, and I didn't know where I was going to eat, and somebody came along, and I decided to love them. That's what happened here. And that's, the, that's, the, that's sort of the nature of this tension that you hear between Jesus and this woman. She was a Samaritan, and she was a woman. In fact, when the disciples return, they're sort of like, what? oh, no, man, what's going on over there? Right? Like, can you imagine my wife and kids coming with me, and all of a sudden they see me talking to somebody, and they're like, uh-oh. What, what's daddy doing? Are they getting ready to fight? Because, you know, I'm such a fighter. <laughs> right? So when we talk about Jesus being intentional and consistent, it wasn't, and this is one of the challenges, I ask the Lord this a lot, because I know God's called me from specifically to leave my career and to go do this full time. But I also know that we can't all do that, and I, I shared a little bit last week about how God was, had showed me, like, if I am intentional and consistent in what I do, even in my career, it's, not no, it's no longer about going to work. Work is just a part of who I am. It's a part of how I pay the bills, but while I'm doing that, conversation ensues. And so the question is, am I intentionally, from my mind, and consistently with regular, on a regular basis with people that I have a relationship with, am I living from a place of who I really am? Of who I really am. All right, because there's one of two realities here, maybe more than one of two. Either you are somebody who's in Christ and you're just waiting for the day that you get to go be in heaven, well, you're actually somebody who has a sustained connection with the most holy God of the universe who wants to know everyone here on this earth. And he's chosen you to be the conduit by which he gets to know them. It's one of the two. Or both. But up here, it needs to be one of the two. So if it's about him using us, then it's like, okay, how do I be consistent? So yes, when, when we do this stuff, like I go to campus and we're intentional and we, we look for opportunities and sometimes I look for people that I can engage or that I can go up and talk to, right? And when I meet those people, sometimes it's an amazing just right up front, the Holy Spirit is there, we jump straight into a spiritual conversation and it just takes off and sometimes it's just three or four or five weeks of just getting to know them. It just sort of depends, but I'm intentionally going, I'm in the same place, I'm being consistent with them, I have a consistent message. I'm like, why is consistency important? Because you can be the greatest Christian to your neighbor. You can be the greatest Christian to your neighbor and, and, and somewhere in it get comfortable with who you are and do something that in their eyes isn't, isn't Jesus. And that's it. They're done. They don't want to talk to you anymore. So how do I maintain this intentionality? How do I stay consistent? We, we talk about these four things here. And, and these four, kind of the four things you see in the middle, obviously all this is driven by the Holy Spirit. That is the most important aspect, right? We can't just turn this into an intellectual process. That's why we, we, John's been saying this. It is a measurement tool. It is meant to just gauge where I'm at with people. So this is what the Holy Spirit shared with me about. That. I was running this week, and he asked me, he said, why do you time your runs? I was like, oh, because I want to get better. Like, the reason I want to have, I want to run a 5K, and I want to do it sub-six-minute miles. 
I don't know if I'll ever get there. Because I sure, I've never, I'm still 40 seconds away, probably, or something like that, getting there. But the reason I do it is because I look back, I time myself, and I go, oh, you know, I, I need, I'm not get, I haven't gotten, I haven't grown much in this area, and I'd like to, uh, you know, maybe I should do more interval running. Maybe I should do a little bit more long distance to build endurance, you know, whatever it may be. And so I use that as a measurement tool. Does, does timing myself make me a better runner? No. Can I be a better runner never timing myself? Yeah. Will I probably become a better runner if I never gauge where I'm at? Yeah. I, I, in my life, I don't. We're all different. Yeah. But in my life, I typically, like, I don't. Kind of like trying to lose weight but never, never weighing yourself. You might. Mm -hmm. But you, met, you don't know where, it's, you never know kind of where you're at. And so that's the way I view this. And that's why it's, this is why it's a help to me. I think I said this before. If it's not a help to you, don't use it. And the problem with treating it like a process and comparing it to John's analogy is, number one, you always think, well, I got to start back at the beginning. I got to start with a casual conversation. So I can't even, I can't even start with my brother my, or my sister. I'm talking my, my biological brother because, man, we're way past casual. <laughs> so that, I just ruined that one. It, it's not like that. That's not part of it, right? The other reason is because what you'll do is, You'll use the measurement tool as a way to say, well, I really, I've got to get to here, and if I'm not there, then I'm not really doing it. And you start beating yourself up because it becomes performance. So we talk about these four things in the center of the Holy Spirit being the center of this is, is praying and going intentionally. That's kind of I'm, whether we're going out or we're going, wherever we're going, we're, we're doing this. And we try to gather people together. You know, we always, John will teach a little more probably about this. We've talked about Luke chapter 10. Kind of going back to... Uh, what Brian said, I don't know where he went, I guess he's teaching a class about food. Did you know Luke chapter 10, John, I don't know if you knew this, you probably do, but there's only one thing in there that's mentioned that you do twice, eat food. I like that. You also have a meal with people. Like how many of you guys when you were younger remember families coming to your house for dinner all the time? We would do it every weekend, sometimes twice a week. How many of you do that on a regular basis now? I mean, it's, you know, it's like something's happened with our culture. So I got Kayla does it every week because she does it at her house and hosts our little church group, which is cool. It's awesome. So, and then that's the other thing I wanted to share, John, was you mentioned 20-second stories of Jesus um, as a way to just talk to people. And when I first heard about these, I sat in the seat of skepticism, and I was kind of like, yeah, that can't really work. And then I began to hear the stories of it working. I began to use it and see it working. So what does a 20-second story of Jesus look like? If the idea is most people can spare 20 seconds. The guy at the gas pump can spare 20 seconds, right? Especially if he's waiting for the gas pump. Some days you're waiting for 10 minutes for that gas to pump, right? So I'll share a real quick story of a young man I know who lives in Montana. I love this story because of how powerful it is. He worked on a, in a wilderness firefighting team. And he always was working on the line with this other gentleman. The guy was really kind of quiet. And they were just out clearing brush and doing some work one day. The guy, his, Brad was the guy that, that, that uh, I know. And he's from the, the Crow Nation. He's a Native American. And uh, they're clearing brush. And all of a sudden, he hears the Holy Spirit. He's praying, talking to the Lord, and he hears the Holy Spirit who runs this, does this stuff in the conversation. And he's been talking to him, praying. And the Holy Spirit gives him a story from the Scriptures. 22nd story of Jesus, a particular one. And so he's like, man, I need to, I need to, I'm only one person here to share. The Holy Spirit must want to do something. So he looks at the guy working with him. I don't know that guy's name, um, but we'll call him Jason for the sake of conversation. And he looks over and he says, hey, Jason, man. He goes, you got a quick second? You mind if we just take a break? And this is his coworker now. He's like, yeah, what's up? He goes, man, I just want to stop for a second because I felt like the Holy Spirit to put something on my heart. I just want to share a story with you that I think might be encouraging. It's like, okay. He goes, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus was tempted to commit suicide. Now, the first time I heard this story, I thought, you heretic. But he goes on, he tells a story. And he says, there was this point in his life where he was taken up to the edge of a cliff and he looked down off the edge of this cliff. It was a long fall. And he felt this heavy temptation to jump off the cliff. But then all of a sudden, he recognized that the, that the desire to jump wasn't really his own, but it was, it was the devil trying to get him to take his life. And once he realized that, he just told the devil to leave him alone, 
and he was able to step back from the cliff and go on about his life. And Jason starts crying. That's 20 seconds, 20 second story. Jason just starts crying and then looks at Brad and goes, dude, there's no way you can know this. My life stinks, man. I'm not going to use the exact words. It's messed up. And I got up this morning and I wrote a note and I loaded my gun and I remember deciding I'm going to go to work one day and I told God, if you're real, you better speak to me today or it's done. He goes, man, I need, I need something in my life like you got. So they started gathering together right there. He prayed with them. And what started from that 20-second story, Brad and Jason and 12 members from their firefighting crew started meeting for lunch every day on a lookout tower and having church while they ate their lunch. Had this awesome little church community. And just imagine for a second if Brad had chose to not be intentional in his conversations listening to the Holy Spirit. That one little story, man, one little story made all the difference. And so their conversation up to that point had been casual, maybe somewhat meaningful. They had some conversations about what was going on in life and stuff and struggles and challenges and maybe... Jason had been dealing with, you know, from time to time. But he was generally, Jason was a quiet guy that didn't talk much. He just kind of stayed by himself, right? But he immediately starts talking about Jesus. He was just started. That's why this is a measurement tool. He didn't start and all these other, he just went straight into Jesus in this situation. And it was exactly what he needed, which is what the Holy Spirit led. I think that's, that's the encouragement is that, I don't want you guys, I, I, I think the thing is, we don't want to think that we have to go like, um, forget the rest of the world and what is going on and I can't have a job and I've got to quit my job and I've got to stop this and I've got to, I mean, God will call some of us to do things like that in our life, but I think it's mostly to set an example. It's mostly to demonstrate that, that there are actually people crazy enough to do it, right? But otherwise, he just wants us to walk in our everyday lives and do this stuff. So there are people in your life that the Holy Spirit is trying to get to. There are people in your life who are struggling with adultery in their marriage and divorce. They're struggling with addictions. They're struggling with depressions and all sorts of stuff. And, and I don't want to pick on us too much, but sometimes we walk around with like a defeated mentality that, oh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you, which is good. You should, right? But you have the source of life. You have the power of the living God inside of you. And if God's design and desire was for everyone to know him, you have a unique opportunity to introduce them to him. Is he in you? Yes. No one can know the Father except those whom the Son reveals to him. Right? Except the Son. Sorry. Those, no, no one can know the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. My job is not to get them saved. My job is to introduce them to Jesus. And Jesus will reveal the Father. So, man, all I got to do is share stories about who Jesus was so they can get to know His character and His personality. This is not a book of rules. This is not a book of rules. This is a book about a character about a personality and about a God who loves people and wants to know them. So we have to let the Holy Spirit and Jesus in us just be seen. Be seen intentionally, not passively. Not passively. Now, yes, passively. People look at your lives and go, man, I want, dude, I want a marriage like yours. Man, I want family like yours. I want, that happens. But also intentionally we're speaking to people and they're speaking into their lives and we're speaking into their circumstances. Don't say, you know what, I'll be praying for you. Just take it a step further and say, can I pray for you right now? That makes a big difference because nobody does that. Right? Little steps, man. You don't go, you don't go from running a 10-minute mile to a 6-minute mile in one day. You do little things that help you move down the path, that move the measurement around. Uh, uh, maybe next week, is Kyle out here? Or is he in class? All right. 
we should see if the Apple TV works because it'd be really cool to show them how we sometimes. I was gonna. I just suddenly felt like I should show how I use Trello and keep up with okay. conversations. But but that is the heart. So just do little stuff. Don't feel like you got to be like. Well, I just need to get a couple hours on campus this week, man. Some of you guys can't do that. That's okay. The heart is how do I intentionally do it where I'm at, and is Jesus really in me and with me? Don't get into religious arguments. Love them and show them Jesus. Actually, we just talked about this. Me and Andrew were talking about this this week. I don't need to argue the scriptures. That's why stories are so powerful. Did you ever? You don't hear Jesus many times having biblical arguments with people. Very rarely did he do that. What he did was he shared stories. The kingdom of God is like. Right? All we need to do is share stories. Your story his story whatever that looks like stories about what he did the life he lived and people get drawn to it people get drawn to it so um so when we're doing this this is again this is just a measurement tool where am i at with the coworker? where am i at with the new guy that just started right maybe it's just man for six months we've been just like hey man how's it going you having a good morning yeah Maybe he's even nice enough to get you coffee. Maybe you go to lunch together, but then while you're having lunch, he starts talking about what's going on in his life. Now my conversation's moving to meaningful. We're having meaningful conversations about stuff going on in his life. And if you are intentionally thinking about introducing him to Jesus, you look for opportunities to bring that conversation up, which leads him into spiritual. And then when they start getting into spiritual, it's like, great, now let me keep him in com- Let me get into community. Right? What does that look like to have somebody in a community? And maybe it's just the two of you start meeting every week and hanging out and sharing Jesus and praying together. So, anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, y'all, um, yes, yes. You can clap, Allison. <laughs> Look how practical you are, man. Um, this is just an encouragement. I just, I see this, I just see this heart of God to where we just as a people just go, yeah, this is who we are. This is what we do. And as we grab hold of it as, a, as, as individuals and as a group, this is how the world just explodes for Jesus. Because we're all living these lives of who we were created to be. It's amazing. If you all want to stand, I'm going to pray over us all. Oh, yes. I don't ever come up here (laughs) I've never been up here talking about intentional something that's personal years ago a lady by the name of Barbara she lived in Florida she was moving to Tennessee she prayed that God would put her in the path of someone in Tennessee that she could witness to and bring to the Lord well she moved next door to my sister in Smyrna on the the base there my sister was not receptive at all she was was downright mean and ugly to the lady she liked the lady but every time she wanted to talk about the Lord my sister was like you know all you religious people you know and you're a bunch of hypocrites and you're this and that and my sister was really really hard on her when it came to spiritual things it took a couple years many tears on Barbara's side at home unbeknownst to my sister because of the pain that my sister caused her with my sister's ugliness towards religion towards God towards all of this until finally finally one day my sister she finally got it she broke down she gave her life to the Lord she cried for days and days and days afterwards releasing all that poison in her life that had been built up for years but if it had not been for Barbara praying ahead of time being intentional praying ahead of time asking God to put her in I'm going somewhere put me in the place to be of help to someone else she would not have been able to reach my sister And then in turn, my sister was able to share with me. And so through her, 
Christ, and I came to know the Lord. I do have another sister that does need the Lord. She knows she needs the Lord. You can't push it down their throat. You can only love and help. But my other sister, Carol, and I love her dearly. She's the younger sister. Her life has been really, really rough. She needs the Lord, and I just pray that, you know, I can be somewhat intentional and casual at the same time in order to help her come to know that how much Jesus really loves her as well. So if you all get an opportunity, just lift Carol up in prayer from time to time. If that name runs across your heart or mind, just lift her up that God will work on her and that she will finally just relent and let God in. Well, we're going to do that right now, and then I'll let David speak. Father, we thank you for Carol, Lord. Lord, we thank you for... Oh, man. We thank you that you love Carol more than more than anyone in this room, Lord. More than anyone in this world. That you know every detail. That you formed Carol. You formed your fingers, your toes, and every part of her in love, in passion. And Lord, we know that your desire is for her to know you because you know everything about her, Father. And so we just ask right now that Carol's mind would just, that her spirit, that, that her heart would just be open, that she would have fresh revelation, revelation of who Jesus is to her, Lord, that any walls that she has, that she has built up, Father, that they would become broken now in the name of Jesus that she would be surrounded by people who authentically love you, Lord, that consistently show her who you are and consistently love her like you love her, Father. And we just say that she is going to be in your kingdom, and we declare that now in the name of Jesus. And we rejoice in that in the name of Jesus. We're not just saying we believe it in the name of Jesus, that she will be, she is yours, and she will see that, Lord, and she will come to you. so amazing. As she was sharing that story, the, I just felt like the Lord was just saying, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the giant churches and the big numbers, but Jesus cares about the barbers. That's who he cares about. He goes to the one and he says, you are worth it. And then asking us, do we love people enough to say, you're worth it. You are worth it. It doesn't take a theology degree. It doesn't take doing all these crazy things it just takes us stopping for that one person in our workplace and saying sharing a story sharing a testimony asking them to go have coffee with us lord <clears throat> i don't know about these folks in here but i just want to raise my hands up and say i am i am i am i'm willing i desire lord to to uh to, to go into this world because lord you have shown me who i am and i just want to be who i am I want to be who I was created to be, Lord. In every aspect of that, Father, I want to grow up into Christ. Completely and perfectly into Christ. And I know that I can and am because I have your Holy Spirit who does just that. That's his specialty. <laughs> and so I thank you for that, Father. And Lord, I ask, Lord, that we, as, as, as a people, that, Lord, that we would just have um, open eyes to see the barbers in our life right now. I believe, guys, there's barbers in, in, in our lives now, and that the Holy Spirit's saying that you may, that you can, that there are people right now that you know that God has already put on your heart. That maybe, maybe your life has become really busy and a lot of things going on, or maybe just you forgot about them. It's okay. We can dwell on the past and get beat up about it, or we can move forward in the future. And, uh, and so, Father, we, we just we thank you for revealing those people to us. And Lord, we just want to say, here we are. We love you so much. Thank you for the new folks, Lord, that you're going to reveal to us. Thank you this week for the new conversations, Lord. Thank you for the new uh, encouragements that all these brothers and sisters are going to be able to bring to each other as we gather next week just so excited about what you've done Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Let this gathering be just a, a, a pep rally for you, Jesus, for glorifying you 
and, and, and encouraging each other in you. We love you so much in Jesus' name.